Good evening and welcome to The Square. Tonight is a very interesting conversation and it's going to look at how creatives in Rwanda can best leverage digital platforms. Of course, um, going digital, going online, these, these are changes that have been brought about by the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, not even changes, changes that have been accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we're going to examine how in Rwanda, local creatives um, are using digital platforms as well as talent detection and management. I'm very happy to have three guests today, and that's because on the square we usually have our resident panelists. Unfortunately, for the first time since we started the show four years ago, they're not here with us, but uh, we shall manage. Charles and Brenna, wherever you are, uh, sorry from where you're watching, um, we, we hope we know that you're with us in spirit. My name is Diamond Pissy, host of the square. I'm joined by um, our guest today, and I'll start with Bill on my right. Uh, we're joined by Bill uh, Christophe Nirimihigo, uh, who is the project officer of Art Rwanda. Uh, Ubuhanzi. Bill, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Great. Uh, also joining us once again, I know this is not your first rodeo, uh, we are joined by Hope Azeda, who is, uh, prod uh, who is director sorry, of Mashirika Performing Arts uh, Company. Hope, thank you for honoring an invitation once again on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. And of course, we are joined none other than um, also uh, taking part in this conversation, Kivumbi King, who is a uh, musician as well as spoken word artist. Uh, Kivumi King, great to have you on the square. Thank you so much. Uh, I know a lot of your fans are watching and uh, I hope we'll be hearing from them later on um, on our social media feed. Uh, so to our viewers, just keep the conversation, uh, kick it off and keep it going using hashtag the square RW on all our platforms, Facebook, Twitter and um, Instagram. So thank you very much for coming through, uh, Kivumi King. Hope and Bill, and uh, my first question really is to do with, um, and I'll direct it to you, uh, King, Chibumbi King first. It's to do with local artists uh, using global digital platforms. So uh, I know you just released your album, uh, DID, uh, which stands for Disassociative Identity Disorder, which I'd actually like to hear a bit more uh, later on. And um, you released this album, King, on 30th July uh, this year, just basically last week. And uh, it is now streaming on global online music platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube, and so on and so forth. Um, you started out as a poet and transitioned into the music scene. I know you're still a poet, but it's great to see your transition. Uh, but my, my question is for you is from your experience, uh, Kivumbi King, uh, why should local artists focus now more than ever uh, on the need to have the music on these digital platforms and how can they do this? All right, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I think it has always been vital to have these platforms even before the pandemic because it is, it is a way to get an audience that is not best only in Rwanda, but it's global. So it is good for an artist before or after. It's just because the pandemic made it, made it more clear. Mm -hmm. It made it uh, uh, visible that sometimes the ways of income that we are used to can just go away like that. And then we have to adapt to other ways. So I feel like that's very important for artists and also any other person like uh, if you do podcasts if you are um any any type of art these days it's online and also for music i i say like for spotify there's playlists and playlists you can pitch your songs to bigger playlists at the end of the day you might find yourself next to drake with kit <laughs> just like that and i feel like that's something that we should also do so much. The third, the third point is independence. As we know it today, our music industry is not, is not the, the most well like, built up. It's still coming up. It's still growing. So as an artist that's independent and waiting for a major record label deal, I feel like it is also a way to go, you know? Yeah. And uh, if you can just share with us how, you know, the technical aspect of it, how do you get, for instance, you're a musician, what was your process of, you know, recording in the studio and then getting your music on these online platforms? And this is for the sake of aspiring or upcoming artists who want to take this path as well. Yeah, so the first things are 
I think is to go in the studio and get the songs finished, mixed and mastered and available, and then you can upload them. There's ways for, for Spotify and Apple Music, there's always uh, a company in between the artist and these, these, these platforms because you cannot just go on Apple Music and sign up. Some of those companies are called DistroKid. One of them is DistroKid, is the one I use. Another one is called TuneCore, and these, these are companies that you pay a yearly fee, which is no more than like $30 or $21, like that. And then you can upload your music for a year for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and just, sorry, before we go to the rest of the viewers, um, what, what has been like? I mean, I, I know it's just one week um, since you released your album and put it on all these global you know, music uh, digital platforms. Yeah. But can you, set, compared to your music that we released last year, for instance, is there a difference in terms of feedback, in terms of impact, in, you know, revenue, sales, money? Is, is, do you feel yeah. it's going to change? Yes, 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 yes. Because the audience keeps growing, you know, and if you keep working, the audience also keeps growing. And with that comes, like, views and streams. YouTube is not the best, you know, when it comes to giving back the artists. Mm. So Spotify and Apple Music, when you have an audience of following there, I feel like then it's a way to also sustain your income. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Hope, would you like to rain on this? Um, basically with regards to um, you know the importance of going digital of course later on uh, we'll come back to online performance events um, based on the work that you do but would you like to just um, touch on what uh, Chivumbi King has said yeah definitely first of all um, our audiences have become a, a very small global village and uh, we need to think beyond home we need to think global, and we need, in terms of also standards, what kind of music does your audience want? Mm. You also have to tap on your identity. You need to know what kind of, who is Kivumbi? Mm. What kind of music does he do? And I had the privilege of, you know, tap, doing a collaboration with Kivumbi, and the reason I picked working with him is, is his special approach. When his music is out, you can tell that is Kivumbi's music. Mm. It is poetry, it is music, it is spoken word. It is a bit rooted into why it's being put out there. So identity is really crucial because you, you know, you have to have like a flag, like my music is out, oh, that's Kivumbi, but not like Kivumbi, she, Beyonce, she, yeah. somebody, she, 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 she. No, yeah. it is Kivumbi, it is, he's out today, yeah. that is who he is. And really, what I also like about his approach, and which I think many artists should, have, should really look into, is also his ability to work and collaborate. Mm. Because we worked with him on a piece called Umudugudu, and this was a collaboration between Rwanda and the UK. And we were not, we were, we were not just looking at Rwanda, we are looking at the world. But because this piece is going also to the Commonwealth Games. So you're thinking Commonwealth Games. And he's quite smart that he has an album out there. So by the time you hit Commonwealth Games, they're looking, oh, who is that artist? What is his music? So his audience will grow bigger. Mm -hmm. So collaborations is really crucial here. Absolutely. Like it, it helps you grow bigger. It helps you build your network and your audience. So his audience is going to be shared with another audience of another artist they will collaborate with. So yeah. Yeah, Identity, very important. Yeah, uh, collaboration, networking is yeah. also quite um, another aspect into that. It, it, it's, you can also look at it as you know some source of income. It's capital. It's capital. Like ne your network sales can also be your capital as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Bill, would you like to also share some insights on this? Um, I mean, I, I think uh, a lot of it has been said. Um, what's really also important, and just to go back off of uh, what Hope shared with us, is diversifying your portfolio as an artist and your streams of income. Because um, not only what this pandemic has showed us is that situations can change um, almost on a daily basis where your main source of income is no longer um, available to you on a, a, at the tip of your fingers. So you have to be able to adapt, you have to diversify your streams of income, your um, appearances, whether it's online, whether it's um, acoustic or any other platforms that you can use. So diversifying your, 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 your audience will give you a better chance to succeed. I Absolutely. Think. Uh, of course, we cannot have this conversation without talking about talent management. Mm. 
uh, talent detection in the country. I, for one, uh, personally, I am very passionate about that, creating platforms for people to express their talent, you know, uh, in safe spaces, and also grow and nurture this talent. So uh, I'll kick off with you uh, on this bill before I come back to uh, Hope and Chivumbi King. Um, you are the project officer for Art Rwanda Obohanzi. Um, I think it's the most, it's the biggest nationwide uh, talent detection and management project. And uh, I know it has been running since last year, if I'm not correct, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, by Imbuto Foundation in partnership with the Ministry uh, of Youth and Culture. Um, so I want to know if you could just share uh, more about this uh, project. I know it aims at identifying and supporting young and talented Rwandans in the creative industry. Can you just tell us more about the project in regards to talent detection and management, uh, as well as how, you know, after you detect and manage this talent, what, what's, what next? What mm -hmm. do you next for your, your creatives? Yes, this is um, it's a great program. It's called Art Wandu Bohanzi. And as you said, it is uh, implemented by Imbuto Foundation and the Ministry of Youth and Culture. And what we do is we have, um, in 2019, we did a nationwide audition um, run where we went in every single district in the country. And all 30 we, districts. All 30 wow. of them, yes. yes. It, was a, it was a long process, but it was absolutely worth it because we realized how much talent there is in this country that is untapped, that is undiscovered. And our aim is to go in all of these little cities, these little corners of the country and um, discover these talents. But then also, once we have discovered them, we give them... Um, an incubation program, mm -hmm. which means that uh, not only we, 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 we take them in, we support them um, with materials in creating their, art, their, their artworks. Um, we cover six different categories. That's music and dance, cinematography and photography. We have literature, we have fashion, um, and we have plastic arts as well. So plastic arts. Plastic arts uh, composes of, of paintings, okay. painters and sculptors okay. and illustrators. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, so once we have gone through the entire country doing these auditions, we selected the 70 best ones we could find. It was not an easy job, I will tell you that. I can imagine. But but, but, but just when, when you say that. 70, but um, my, the, according to numbers, you said it was 587. Was no, that... we started uh, nationwide. We had over 2,500 auditioners. Oh, wow. Nationwide. Over 2,000. Yeah, 2,500, yes. yes. And yes. we had to break it down and trim it down, basically, to choose the 70 best. Um, unfortunately, two of them ended up leaving the country, so now we have okay. 68 artists that I work with, okay. that we work with. And what we do is basically not only give them the tools to create their art, but we also um, incubate them by giving them mentors who are in their field of work so that they can teach them how to be successful and how to sustain mm -hmm. an income and how to become independent in your mm -hmm. artwork. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, courses on financial literacy and they have discussions and meetings with these mentors uh, on a weekly basis so that they keep learning and that once they finish this incubation program, they can survive on their own in mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. And, um, in terms of, uh, I, I know it's just two years, but are there sort of digital plans to enable these people to go digital? Is there sort of, I don't know, to start with a web portal? How do Absolutely. You, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, as we all know, this pandemic has flipped the world outside, upside down, if I can has, put it that way. Yeah. Um, so the plans that we had for these artists had to be um, formatted and changed in order to um, be able to adapt to the situation that we're in right now. So we ended up creating a digital uh, web store, an online web store, um, which is uh, by that R2 and that, that RW. And we also pushed very hard on our social media presence uh, with our Twitter and Instagram accounts, because since we could not be in proximity of our uh, potential clients and, and audience, we had to find a way to to, to reach them. So the platform that we have, the web store, um, we put the artwork that is created by our artists, we put it online and it allows people to be able to purchase it and then either get it delivered to them mm -hmm. um, one way or another, whether it's nationally or internationally. And we also plan on expanding this program so that um, it is not only the artists that are incubated through the Art Rwanda program, mm -hmm. but just nationwide. Any artist that has artwork, um, that has a proper structure, uh, whether it's management, which I, I think we will come back mm -hmm. to again. Um, it allows them to be able to come and post their artwork, mm -hmm. sell it, 
um, and then reach a bigger audience. And our aim is to make it um, a, a regional platform, first of all, oh, wow. and eventually continental. That's quite ambitious. Yes. Uh, that's amazing. Have, have some artists, have some creatives um, garnered some sales um, already? Um, yes, we have, we have, especially on our plastic art side, which are the painters and illustrators and sculptors. Those are the ones that kind of catch your eye when you mm -hmm. go on our website. Mm. So yes, we have managed to make um, over 10 million one in francs in sales wow. off of the website during this pandemic, during which the is pandemic, yeah. something that I'm very proud of. Yes. And um, I commend uh, the artists that we work with yeah. who have done a great job. That's, that's really um, heartening because I know many times on the show we've talked about uh, talent in Rwanda. Is it really nurtured enough? Is it really detected, in, especially in the creative industries, which are often overlooked, underfunded, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I hope I'll come back to you um, shortly. I, I know you've been nurturing and managing talent since your days of, you know, starting Mashirika. Uh, but I just want to hear from King. You know, you're a young artist, uh, King. Yeah. Uh, I know you uh, from for quite a while uh, during your spoken word days. What's your take on talent detection and management in Rwanda? How, in your opinion, from your perspective, the landscape, is it growing? Can more be done? Um, is it better than it was, let's say, five years ago? What's, what's your take on this, uh, Chibumbi King? Um, I, think, I think it has grown for sure. It has grown uh, given the platforms, like the, the opportunities pre presented to a young artist, like for myself, I'm a good example. When I was studying, all I needed was a place to go and recite my poems. And I feel like spoken word was that for me. And what I think has to be improved is we need more spaces like spoken word render. We need more of them. We need various, various kinds. Otherwise, Ubu Hanzi is doing an amazing job in finding artists from everywhere across the country. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, King. Hope, um, mm -hmm. I know you have a lot to say on this uh, topic. Yes, um, the talent landscape uh, in Rwanda in terms of talent search, talent detection, management, nurturing. Uh, what's your take on it? Uh, truly speaking, like Bill said, when you start looking out for talents, that's a good step forward to, to you know, help to, to support creative industries. and. And there's also really rich talent in this country. There is Absolutely. rich talent. There's very unique talent. And I can give an example. Recently, maybe I'll talk about this later. We are looking for someone, a Rwandan musician, who can add a little bit of Arabic twist mm. because we are going to do a Rwanda-Jordan collaboration. And so between said, Rwanda and yes, Jordan. Yes, and, and the dancers and choreographers in Jordan were like, if you can send us your music, but add an Arabic twist. That is a challenge for us. Yeah, Where do you get these kind of things? Yeah. But people are there, I'm like, okay, let's try three artists. And they, uh, the, the first um, drafts we sent to Jordan, they're like, this is amazing. This wow. is what we are looking for. So that shows you that there's really, really talent. But again, like Bill said and, and, uh, and Kivumbi said, there's spaces for them to showcase their work. And I think we need more festivals, we need more platforms, we need more spoken words because one thing, there's one thing you can go cook your meal, but you want to share it with people. And when they taste it, they will come back for more. But we, if they never taste it, if they just hear about it, it's also another challenge for mm. an artist. So they need to just showcase their work. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and in terms of management, um, how do you think talent is being managed here? And here I'm talking in Rwanda, you know, I'm talking about producers or agents um, or, in, you know, projects like uh, yours, Bill. Um, you know, how, you know, for the sake of the viewers and also for lay people like myself who don't really know the inwards of management of, of talent, how, how is it? How, how are our actors? Do we have professional management agencies for actors, for musicians, for poets, for, you know, for content creators? Do we have that sort of thing? Uh, and I'll kick off with you, Hope, before I go to Chibumi King and Bell. Yeah, what Art of Hands is doing is amazing because they get the talents, they give them mentors, and then they keep, like, you know, mm -hmm. babysitting them, although they need to leave them at some point. Absolutely. So they need to, like, fly <laughs> on their own because yeah. once they get used to that safe space, yeah. they don't learn how to explore the, sure. you know, the hard waters. So really, I think we could do better. We need to do better. We need to do better. And I think we in Mashirika, we do our best, very best. But at the end of the day, we need to keep them in business. So if they, economically, if the situation is not doing well, it's hard to keep them moving. But mm -hmm. 
the skills can be acquired right now because online people are getting like all sorts of information and things mm. that they can have. But they can, you don't even have, you don't need just an agent or manager in this country. You can have that same person you want in the U.S., in mm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be physically present right now. This is where the digital platforms are coming in handy. So you just need to like throw your work out there. Be your first manager, first mm. of all. First, like <laughs> get organized internally mm. uh, before you invite in people to manage you. Because it would be hard to manage somebody who's already in, in, in whatever, different, scattered all over the place. Mm. So yeah, we need first of all to first like get an irritation ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think when at one point when, when, um, when arts and education, which you've always like, advocated for, really comes in handy, I think everything fall in place. But mm. so far so good, people are doing their very best honestly. Absolutely. Because you can see somebody like, uh, um, uh, what is this musician being managed by Lee? By who? Or which? Lee, 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 the, one of the top musicians. Bruce what? Melody. Bruce yes, Melody? Bruce Melody. Yeah. He's, he has a How can you not know Bruce Melody? I know, <laughs> I know the name just went deep, like <laughs> off my head. But yeah, Bruce Melody, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm seeing the management piece, I'm not seeing what he's yeah. doing, but yeah. well, that's his like in his hands. Mm. So he's managing him. So if, he, if, if we have more people like that, then it's really good for mm. artists. Mm. Yeah. Um, I want to go to King um, because he, I, I like what you said about self-management. Mm. You know, uh, of course, I'm thinking about the traditional model. You need a manager or an agent mm -hmm. to you know, be the middleman between you and different you know, contracts or venues and that sort of thing. Uh, but I really like what you said about self-management in this day and age that we're living in now. Uh, and King, I want to go to you because I, I want to know, is this something you're doing? Um, and how is it working for you so far? Yeah, so this is, this is something I started doing one year ago after, after I'd waited for some, someone that had the same vision as I had. But I figured maybe waiting for that someone is not the way. I could just start it and build my own vision. And right now, I opened up my own company. It's called Six Sound Dimension. And Can I am you repeat that? It's called what? Six Sound. Six, Six Sound, Sound. Okay. Dimension. Yes, yes. It's, it's a whole different dimension that I'm trying to build. Um, yeah, and I've been self-managing myself ever since then right now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, things are really changing. Um, Bill, I want to also yeah, talk about management, mm -hmm. uh, but I would also like you to, I would like to follow up also when it comes to talent detection and management. I know you said you went to all the different corners of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. If you can just go back to that, you know, people who have lack, you know, lack of access to electricity, to information, to these digital platforms. Uh, but just also just briefly talk about, uh, start off by talking about talent management. Yeah, um, I think talent management is one of um, the aspects of the creative industry or the creative world that is very um, overlooked right now in Rwanda or just not being um, taken seriously for because of, of just the, it's, it's a young industry in this country and I think we haven't really reached a level where um, a, an artist's environment and team is, is, is allowed to grow and to live off of that mm. said artist. Because what we've noticed is that when we did the talent search, we noticed that there is an abundance of talent in this country, but um, they don't know how to navigate this world, this mm. creative arts world. Um, so yes, there is no managers, there is no publicist, there is nobody handling the social medias for them. And it breaks them down because they, they have to wear many hats at the same time. And at that point, you, you're, you're not good at any of them specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that uh, nationwide, I think, or, or even just in the region, is something that we need to really put some effort into it, um, which is we, we're trying to do our part, but um, it's, it's, it's not enough. We need more. We need um, different investments. We need different players to participate, mm -hmm. not just whether it's um, governmental institutions, but we need the private sector to get invested in it. And we also need institutions to understand that um, an artist and art um, benefits the companies that uh, hopefully they will end up working with. So what happened with Bruce Melody is a good example of mm -hmm. someone who knows management, who has a team behind him, and what levels that can get you to. And hopefully we'll see more of that in we'll the near future. Yeah. Uh, just very briefly, I mean, I just got this off a tweet, which we'll come back to, but if you could just shed more light on 
accessibility of, of, of this talent uh, management and detection when it comes to you know, creatives from different parts of, of Rwanda? How, what's your approach to making it as inclusive as possible? Um, that's a great question. And honestly, because this is still just our first cohort, our first group of artists that we work with, this is the first time we launch um, uh, an, uh, a program of this size. Um, I, mean, I mean, we're talking about nationwide. Mm. So um, we are learning. Mm. It's still a learning process for all of us. Um, so the, the talent um, identification, I, I, I would call it, would be that uh, what happened is that we had different judges on our panels um, that participated in the, uh, that were there present during the auditions. And if they managed to see um, that little spark of talent in an artist, we brought them in, into the, the finalist groups and we kept choosing the best ones and the best ones and, until we got to our total of 70. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, sadly, we do not offer the management aspects. Um, in terms of the, the the mentoring that we give them, mm. and we hope to do that with our next cohorts when we're allowed to go back and do another round. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, um, thank you very much, Bill. Um, I would like us to just go to a Twitter feed um, and read some of the tweets that are coming in, um, if that's ready. Uh, and the first tweet we have um, on our screens is from Tweet Cindy Jackson, who says, "Currently, digital digital platforms are imposing to the entire world." So we are obliged to get familiar with it. Unfortunately, some challenges are still hindering us to progress. Those challenges include infrastructure such as limited internet connection and limited skills. Absolutely. Um, and, and we'll talk about this uh, shortly, uh, but for sure. And he goes on to say, um, say something about young generation with incredible talent but living in rural areas where even electricity is still a big challenge. Bill, you just talked about this. Um, how can they access social media to leverage the digital platforms? How can they post their artwork? Um, I'm going to throw this tweet to uh, Hope and um, Kimumbi King uh, before we go to our next tweets. Um, the other tweet coming in, we have it from Remy. And uh, Remy says that concerning le leveraging digital platforms for random creatives, they should educate themselves on which platforms to use, how to use them, and their metrics. Absolutely, self-teaching self, uh, is very important. If creators improve their creativity and education on platforms, their growth will be exponential. Um, spot on Remy with that uh, tweet. Uh, we also have another tweet. We'll come back to our tweets. Uh, sorry, we have another tweet coming in from Ryan, who says, challenges many Rwandan multimedia artists face is one, access to broadband, especially at home. Online collaboration requires excellent connectivity. I, I agree very much with Ryan. Um, access to affordable quality gear, maximizing impact on platforms, and this is equipment. Uh, embracing courageous, relentless, self-directed learning. Those are serious tips. Um, <laughs> uh, King, I hope you're taking notes, although I think you're doing quite well in, in that regard. Um, we'll keep the, the tweets coming. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to go to the next part of um, the conversation, which is now you know, just going a bit deeper into what we've been discussing, which is to do, to do with online events. And here I will start with you, Hope. You. Uh, as a director of Mashirika Performing uh, Arts and Dance Company, you've been able to host not one but two uh, virtual, global virtual festivals uh, across online platforms. And uh, this is, you've done this amidst the pandemic. Um, so, um, of course, here I'm referring to the 2020 and 2021 Ubuntu Arts Festival, uh, the sixth and seventh annual uh, festivals, respectively. So, yeah, Hope, um, you know, for the sake of our viewers, policy makers, people in the creative industry, organizing two global virtual festivals uh, amidst the pandemic, what has that been like? Um, what are the learning curves? Uh, and what do you think is the future of performance events uh, on digital platforms? Well, um, it's been an intensive PhD course. <laughs> Honestly, uh, us who do like physical performances, uh, we didn't find this space to be a safe space to just throw our content out there. First of all, this is a festival that started at Kigali Genocide Memorial, and all the content was very sensitive. You know, it's about humanity, it's about tes it's tem testimonial kind of content, which you cannot just throw out there. First of all, we needed to, uh, it's been like more like building an audience a special audience that is not just going to come because, you know, that is not going to, we are not going to create content just 
for them, but they have to also buy our content the way it is. And we're not just going to compromise truth and facts because there's a certain audience that just needs to watch things for two minutes and go away. Mm. They want fast, 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 fast things. So we had to learn what kind of audience is out there. So we, re we realized that we needed to just, first of all, build an audience. And that's how we started with the, like 100 stories of home. So on the 7th of April, we start like series, weekly series up to the July mm -hmm. festival. And this weekly series, this time around, the first was bringing it was less hectic. We learned from what we did last year. And after last year, we all go, almost all got mental breakdowns. Okay, it was okay. intense. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to leave one leg in the world and one leg in the air. Mm -hmm. And we are like, no, 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 no. This year, we are just going to make it simple. Simple to, for us and also simple for the audience. First of all, the audience is also mentally you know, exhausted because of all the mental health issues going on. The audience is tired of screens because of all the, you know, the Zooms, the remote, everything mm. that is happening around the world. Mm. And so we just realized that let's just you know, be, make the festival very short. Instead of three days, you're going to make two days. Mm. Instead of, I don't know, six hours per day, we're going to do two hours. Instead of the longest performance is going to be 10, minutes. Mm. That's it. That's the longest performance. Then others can be two minutes and five minutes because of also <laughs> we needed to consider the, the short attention the span. attention span exactly. that was very, very, yes. very fragile mm. actually. Yeah, so we had to pay attention to all that. So this time around, for our stories of home, we didn't run shows like every day from Monday to Friday like we did last year. Mm -hmm. We're just focusing on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And for Mondays, we, we called it Creativity Unlocked. And this is why we're just trying, like the young people are asking from rural areas, how do we showcase our work? People are just sending things us on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And we just like, let's see how we can share this work. So Creativity Unlocked was inspiring you know, young people to stay plugged into their art making, regardless of what they're going through. And then Wednesdays was just that bit where we called it like, it was IG Live sessions with home, um, home chat Sonia. And Sonia is where she was knocking on every, every creative uh, door around the globe. And the questions are simple, how are you doing? <laughs> How are you coping? Yeah. And just to show that there's a bit of a human being behind this whole robot kind of, you know, digital <laughs> space madness, you know? Mm -hmm. We just want to like, keep being human in some way. Like, let's just have a conversation. How are you doing today? You know, you, you just check on someone from Brazil, somebody from Mexico, somebody from Uganda, and just check on them because really artists faced it rough and they're still really going through and uh, that's actually one of the biggest challenges we faced this time around was mental breakdowns in artists mm -hmm. around the globe. They're on the lineup and then they, they send a message, I am in a hospital, I can't deliver my work, oh. I need more time, you know, so you cannot give, it, give them like deadlines and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So on Fridays we tapped on what we called homelessness and all this are creating an audience that we want in July because we're going to talk about homelessness, we're going to talk about how are we creating in these circumstances and that's what we're trying to like create. So you're also very strategic about it. We are very, it. very strategic on yes. who we want. Yes. Uh, yeah, because we knew what the kind of conversation, because we believe art sparks the un, uh, very difficult conversations and what kind of conversation do you want people to, to, to have during our festival? Mm -hmm. So homelessness became our crucial point because of what was the, all the domestic violence issues that were going on through the pandemic, the teen pregnancies, and we are just shifting from the physical state of homelessness on the streets, but also on the mental state. You know, uh, a 15-year-old girl is pregnanted by an uncle, somebody supposed to be looking after them at home. Where do they go? The streets are not safe. Mm. They are stuck in that home. So there's a, people in a home, but they're still homeless. Mm. So we wanted to, you know, spark that conversation. Mm. And uh, that's the only panel we actually had even during the, the festival in July. So basically, by the time we finished our three-month series, we had an audience waiting for the performances. Oh. And also the other thing we pushed for this time around in this year was collaborations. Because collaborations were the key, uh, key the way was, we were, uh, collaborations with, was the pillar of, mm. of the festival. Artists would travel to Rwanda and create works. You know, you have Sri Lanka and Rwandan artists meet for a month creating work. And that really, 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 we were missing that. We mm. said, how do we do this when we can't meet physically? Mm. Can we really try? 
And, you know, we stopped asking questions this year. That was something also we learned. We're like, you know, when you ask a question, you get a slap of another question. Yes. When is this stopping? How do I know? Yeah. You know, so it, <laughs> the whole conversation ended up feeling like it's questions in conversations. Yeah. So we stopped asking questions. We are just like, let's trust the pro process. The vision is great. We don't know how we'll get there, but once we get there, it will be beautiful for everyone. So we pushed artists out of their comfort zones to collaborate, to work together, regardless of what they are, what they're doing. And we gave them a theme rebirth. So by the time we came to the festival in, uh, on the 16th and 17th, we had also learned that we are not going to scatter content all over, all over different social media platforms. Because mm -hmm. last year we were like on YouTube, we are on Twitter, we are like all over the place. But now we were just on our website. Mm. So our website became our theater hall. Mm. We are like, you know what? You want to watch this festival? This is where to watch it. Mm. And we did, we, we, we patterned, of course, with the people who do it on a, on a, on a daily basis called um, How Round Theater of Commons. It's a huge broadcasting um, platform in the US. So we patterned with people who know what they're doing, but we just wanted less everything because YouTube, like, she won't be said, there's, there's always traffic. You can't yeah. run there anything live and it goes smoothly. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So, we so went those, to, are, those are the learning curves. I, I think yeah. it's very important that you learned that you need to simplify it. Mm -hmm. You need to consider people's attention spans. Mm. Uh, you also are really putting a human touch to it mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people are going through uh, mental issues uh, with this pandemic. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the 2022 Ubuntu uh, Arts Festival. Um, King and uh, Bill, and I'll start with you, King. What, what do you think is the future of um, digital platforms? I and mean, you know, for a country like Rwanda, and I'm not just talking about music, I'm also talking what Hope has just shared with us, online performances. And King, I'll, uh, I'll kick off with you. Um, I think the future is bright, uh, <laughs> given, given our challenges, like, as people are saying on Twitter, it's electricity is still a challenge in some parts, and if we look at our competition, if we look at Tanzania, the population is 35 million. If we look at our competition in Nigeria, the population is 250 something million. I feel like with our population and what the results are, it's already promising. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Bill, what do you think? Um, I completely agree with, with what King just said. Um, listen, us as Rwandans, we are people who are very creative, very resilient, and we always find a way to make things work. So it's in our, I believe, like, I believe that it's in our DNA. And um, although we have been faced with some challenges um, in these past couple of years, we have managed to come out on top. And I believe that um, what, what we are doing, for example, with Art Rwanda Buhanzi, um, is creating content and again, coming back to the tweet about um, lack of electricity or not being uh, able to come to the city of Kigali to enjoy um, a concert or an event. So we try to diversify, again, um, our ways of reaching um, our, our other um, countrymen. So we have a very successful TV show right now that's running uh, on this very network called Ejo Siquiera. Mm -hmm. And it also addresses a lot of the subjects and topics that Hope uh, talked about, which are mental health, which are um, drug abuse, um, teenage pregnancies. We know that uh, the numbers have been going up a lot during this pandemic. And one way we try to reach um, the youth and the people involved is through the creative aspect of it, to make it entertaining, but with a message mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. So whether it's through a TV series or conversations on radio about um, the state of, of these um, issues that we deal with, we, we always find a way to, to um, get the message across. Mm -hmm. And I think, like even we said, the future is bright because now we have all this accumulated knowledge and once we reopen, we're not just going to go back to the old ways. We're right. going to incorporate that mm -hmm. into everything that we do moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it's going, to, it's going to be much more interesting. And uh, as um, Rwandans, yeah. we always pull up. Uh, and we always pull up indeed. Um, did you, was that intentional? Because I know King <laughs> has a song called Pull Up. <laughs> I mean, that was a really wink to him. Just so yeah, that was a nice wink. Um, I just want us to go uh, back to our Twitter feed. Um, just have some couple of tweets before we, you know, lock down the last part of this conversation. Uh, and the first tweet we have um, is from Ali, who says that speaking of streams and views, Kivumbi King and Mike Kaihura reached a million views on YouTube today on their feature, Sabrina. 
Uh, so, well, uh, congratulations. props to you, congratulations to you, uh, King. Our other tweet uh, coming in is again from Remy, who says that in Rwanda we need intervention of government institutions, Rwanda Development Board, uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, to make Rwanda be visible on these platforms like YouTube monetization markets. If a country is not listed there, creators don't gain enough and it is, it is difficult to gain. Um, I think, I, I don't know if that's, you know, um, the onus is on government to do that or, uh, you know, individual creators. Yeah, absolutely. About that, please, if you don't mind. Yes, sure. Um, I just want to, of course, it is very important that um, governmental institutions or just um, institutions in general, they don't mm -hmm. even have to be governmental. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the private sector also mm -hmm. who has, mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of power behind them. So they need to invest as well. Like, for example, um, the government of Rwanda, through the Ministry of Culture, uh, youth and culture um, created a grant um, this past year mm -hmm. of 300 million Rwandan francs directed strictly and um, exclusively to the creative and cultural industry. Um, with that, we managed to um, work with some projects so people come in, they pitch in their projects, and then um, the finalists get selected and they become, again, we, we try to help them. But obviously, um, it's, we can't do everything ourselves. So this is also a call to private institutions, uh, organizations, or even private companies to invest in the arts, um, in the arts in Rwanda, because we are, we tend to be forgotten. Um, we are often considered a non-essential business, um, but mm -hmm. a lot of people live off of this craft, and it is absolutely necessary and it's vital to the well-being of people. If there's no entertainment, there's no music, Absolutely. then as a people, yeah. we are not in a good space. So this is an invitation to all private um, industries and institutions to invest in the arts. There is value in it, and we'll all be all the better for it. Yeah, I really like that call uh, to action, especially to the private sector, uh, you know, to come and also support the creative industries and, and the arts. Um, that tweet on um, uh, a million views uh, to, you know, uh, on Sabrina, uh, well done, but it also it also makes me think of uh, you know recently I don't know if it was sometime last week uh, Mehdi had I think also a million views on his latest song, and people were questioning these views. King, what do you have to say on that? I mean, I, obviously that tweet shows it's possible, but there are people who doubt other musicians' ability to do that. What's what's your take on that, King? Um, I've, there's rumors, of course. People are, are talking. Um, I don't know what to believe because I have not tried these ways before. I always try, <laughs> <laughs> I always try to, to keep an authentic um, following and it, it grows, you know. Yeah. But there's, there's surely ways to promote your songs off YouTube so that they get actually more views. But also to come back on the tweet that, that we just read right now, people have that missed Information. I don't know where they got it from. That Rwanda is not listed in the countries that exactly. Are, Please comment on that. Yes, <laughs> that are listed for monetization on YouTube. No, Rwanda is very well listed, yeah. and mm. you can monetize your channels and get paid while you're here in Rwanda. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you very much, King. Uh, we're coming to the last part of the show, and I just want us to touch on closing remarks from uh, all of you. Um, you know, whether you on, on the subject in general. Um, talent detection and management, as well as the utilization, really, uh, in terms of Rwandan creatives using and leveraging digital platforms. Uh, the future is now. I know we've been doing it as a country, you know, people in the creative industry, but this is being accelerated, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and I'll start with you, Hope. Um, you know, closing remarks, your takeaway or your call to action to our viewers, um, people in the, private, in the private sector, public sector, civil sector, you know, uh, closing remarks. Over to you, Hope. Yeah, like Bill said, we, it would be really nice to just see, you know, to have homegrown support, you know. If you're not supported at home, then where will you be supported? So we need support, definitely. If you, we, we need the locals to buy their own art, to just pay attention to their own art as well, to just, you know, go and just, you know, listen to your local music. People don't want to listen to local music. <laughs> you know, you have to like throw it in their face all the time. Because yeah. really posting things out there is not enough. You have to go on these very busy streets called Insta stories and keep yeah. saying, oh, I have a song, I have yeah. a song. 
So it'd be really nice for people to just know that you know charity begins at home, mm -hmm. and if we are going to talk about creative industries, we cannot talk about creative industries without um, support from our own homeland. We need that support, but also the, my call to artists is, is for them to also really work hard, they shouldn't stop. I know there's a lot of mental health breakdowns coming, you know, hitting them so so mm. much, but they need to tap the inner child in them and mm. keep exploring, you know, keep playing, keep, keep innovating, keep creating. The better you become, the better your audience and the bigger your audience has become. Mm. Thank you very much, Hope. Bill, closing remarks? Um, I mean, we've said a lot of things here today, and I think there is, um, I hope we can continue these conversations um, beyond this show and on all these social platforms. So um, to close, I just to uh, hope use the quote saying, um, uh, charity begins at home. I would like to use another quote and say, um, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. <laughs> so again, we have to really support each other, support our own. And with that, we'll be able to stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us and expand our, our, our reach into the world. So um, we need to invest in ourselves. We need to create our own platforms. We don't need to only um, depend on YouTube or Spotify. We can create our own YouTubes and Spotify's. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has the talent, yes, it is true that it's difficult to have the resources, but I think our country is working very hard to make this available all over, whether it's internet access, whether it's transportation, so um, we just have to keep chipping at it, and eventually I think we'll reach a level where um, everybody can have a slice of the pie. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And I especially like your uh, comment on saying, why also, why not create our own Spotify's? Why not create our own mm -hmm. digital uh, platforms? Um, yeah, uh, I would also, yeah, finally, King, if we could hear from you, um, you know, closing remarks on this topic that we've had so far. Um, yes, uh, on this one I agree with Hope and um, Bill because if runners don't like our music, if we don't like our music then nobody's going to like it for us. And also we need to find ways to, as Bill also said, make our own Apple Music, make our own Spotify because at the end of the day for Spotify and Apple Music, just because they don't operate in Rwanda or Africa, they're always going to have something that's bigger than an artist that works there. Mm -hmm. So that would be very nice. Uh, King, and just very quickly, uh, for the sake of our audience, why is your album called, just very briefly in a nutshell, why is, it, why is your album titled Dis DID, D Disassociative um, Identity Disorder? Um, it's because DID is what was known as multiple personality disorder, and I, on the album, I, didn't, I did not want to approach the album as one side of Chivumbi because there's Chivumbi, the singer, the rapper, and the poet. So the album is many identities of Chivumbi King. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we have a tweet coming in from Ryan. Um, and Ryan, this is the last tweet for today. And um, if you could have that on our screens, uh, he says that, um, if you could have that on our screens, and he says that definitely uh, check out Envision Rwanda about what they're doing to support creatives uh, that are in Rwanda's uh, landscape today. So yeah, it's, it's good to see that there are different uh, initiatives to really support and nurture and, and push forward um, our, our creatives from the creative industry. Uh, to our viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, thank you very much for sharing your comments, your views, uh, your questions, your suggestions. Uh, keep the conversation going using hashtag the square RW. Uh, I would like to thank, um, and I'll start by King, I would like to thank our viewers. Um, Kivumi King, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, I wish you continued success with your album, your self-management, uh, your self-promotion. Keep pushing and keep uh, inspiring uh, our youth, uh, especially when it comes to uh, how, how they can best leverage on the, on the digital platforms. If you can have you on our screen, please. Uh, Jiwumbi King, thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, and all the best moving forward. For real. Um, Hope, uh, great to have you. Um, all the best with um, Mashirika, um, with Ubumunu Arts Festival. I know you're a supporter of the arts uh, for the last, um, what, 24 years? 25? 21 years. <laughs> 21 years. Uh, yeah, it's over two decades. Keep on pushing and um, 
uh, it's great to see that your activities have really put Rwanda also uh, in the creative global space in terms of collaborations, in terms of you know sharing our talent across across our borders. So. Yeah, keep up with that and all the best. Thank you for joining the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Bill, yes, it's just been very inspiring to listen to Arts uh, Rwanda Ubuhansi. Um, I think it's the only project of its caliber that's nationwide. And uh, we look forward to ensuing editions. Uh, all the best. And uh, hopefully we'll have you again uh, soon on the show so you can share with us, you know, um, the outcomes of the work you guys are yes, doing. Yes, it's, it's been a great pleasure being here and uh, I look forward to hopefully co collaborating with uh, Hope and Kivumbi and all the creatives in the country and then uh, be on the lookout for Artuan Dubuhanzi and hopefully we next time we will not be the only initiative like this mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. We hope to grow and um, keep inspiring Rwandans. Yeah. Thank you very much um, to all of you. Have a good night. Uh, see you again next week.